All right, this is our third attempt. This is just uh, trying to find the proper internet connection. We're using our hotspot because somehow the internet in the place is a little wacky today. We got to talk to the uh, landlord. I think everybody uh, is using uh, it's Sunday. Sunday today. It's Sunday, and you know, and there's. I mean, hey, you figure that people would be, you know. Technology as advanced as it is is still not as advanced. We've got Jay Flores. Jay Flores. Hey Jay. How's it going? That's cool. I can type too. Yeah. Funny. Funny. yeah. So anyway, what are we talking about? I don't know. We started talking about a lot of things but it got thrown off because yeah, the, yeah, the internet was like so we had a start do over. Yeah, we were talking about this cute little thing that I bought. Recently bought. Yeah, it's called the Honey Tone, and it, believe it or not, as small as it is, is an app, and it has for the not small. Not a lunchbox. Not a lunchbox. As small as it is, it packs a punch, and it really does. You look like one of those models from The Price Is Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but and you can clip it on your belt. You know, I'm waiting for a little processor to come in, and the processor is even smaller. But it has like I think over 60 or 40 something different system sounds, and it's got a, a drum beat box in it and the whole nine yards. And you can see my lovely has her Yamaha keyboard. I play the guitar, and she plays the keyboard, and together we make beautiful music. Good afternoon, Jay, and thank you, Andy, for joining us. Um, so yeah, we, we plan to resume our music. Yeah, it's been so nice to be able to get back to playing again, and um, I've missed it a lot. Okay. But I talked about it in another show that that we did last week. Yeah. But you know, we've been getting into playing, you know, mostly covers right now. But yeah. you know, just trying to get our our chops back. You know, mm -hmm. guitar wise, your fingers probably yeah, need, need to, to build more calluses and stuff. Strength. And, and I'm also working on my grip strength so that it'd be a lot easier to, you know, handle playing. But yeah, I want to get back into writing some more stuff. Although I have over a hundred and something songs in I my library. I thought you had fifteen hundred chrome catalog. One hundred and fifty. One hundred and fifty. Yeah. I think I've only heard ten of them. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's a ton. If you go to YouTube, there's like a, a playlist. Mm. A playlist. I think we we keep doing. No, okay. We're right. good. Yeah. Okay. Pausing yet. Oh, okay. But yeah, it's it's really nice to be able to get this part of our lives back. Yeah. You know, and living out of a car is not something you can actually bring a keyboard and play and stuff like that. Although with your new little honey tone, you oh, can yeah. take that on the road with you and oh, yeah. stick it on a guitar strap or on your whatever. But you all start getting what, the processor. The little processor. It's process. about the size of a peanut? Or what? Yeah. How big you know, is that? Not peanut, but it's like a little thing like that. Oh. But it packs a whole bunch of different. Jay says, sounds. afternoon to you both. And Alberto Perez joined us. Is he from Argentina or I something? I think so. Or Hola, Alberto. From Spain or something of that nature. But yeah, it's the creative outlet. It's something that it's important, and I've kind of been away from it, and I have a lot of you. I have. And, um, but we're thinking about, you know, playing live sometime in the future, not just here, but like little places here around town. Um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe, Maybe I don't know. Down the road with it. I mean, that's always Coming to a town near, near you. you. Gypsy Blue Nomads. I think that's, that's right. That's that's perfect name. That would be a good name. name for the band. Yeah. That would be a good name. I... I like that name. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, being able to keep that name yeah. is, is kind of catchy. Yeah, it is. Catchy, yeah. So it doesn't have to Carolina. mean anything, necessarily. Yeah, you know. definitely. But, yeah, it's, it's been, uh, you know, like today we went to the gym. Yeah. We've, we're doing a seven-day-a-week thing yeah. where we go to the gym. Now, my muscles have been getting tired. Oh, you were pushing it. I mean, I'm trying to lift as heavy as I can without any hormones. I just use a supplement called Suma Root, which really it's not a out. root. Well, it's a root. It's a root, but yes. it's not literally a root. He's not eating a root. No, but it's, it's powdered down yeah. into a capsule form, and it comes from Brazil, and it's cousin to 
uh, Siberian ginseng, which is what I was looking for originally. Wait a minute. How can it be a cousin of Siberian ginseng if it's from Brazil? Well, cousin meaning that it does are on the same thing. Oh. When I was looking for ginseng, I actually ran into Suma and did a oh. lot of research and liked what I read. And I've been on it now for almost three months. And actually, I'm 128 pounds. Um, I originally started off after the past 114, so I put on some mass. Lean muscle. Without any hormones. Um, at my age, I'm 53 years old, and as long as I was on testosterone for almost 15 years, I was uh, worried that I was going to start experiencing problems, as many of my uh, FDM friends have experienced problems. I've lost friends from a heart attack to strokes and you name it. And I think it's something that you know people really need to be careful. It's like get in and get out. And I, I don't recommend people doing um, synthetic hormones for longer than three years. Because basically, after three years, you're not really going to get much changes, and it's just going to be residual added yeah. overload, you know, type of thing on, on your system. So if you get something to maintain yourself, a natural form like a, an herb, you know, that would be the best thing. And that's that's kind of like where we're at at this point in our lives. You know, we've taken the hormone route, and mm -hmm. I know that there's thousands of people out there who can't do without them and feel like, you know, the transition would stop if they if they didn't take them. And, you know, we're living proof that transition doesn't stop. Living your life as you are, as mm -hmm. you, you know, choose to be, yeah. doesn't stop just because you stop taking some synthetic pill, yeah. you know. Um, the pill doesn't make you who you are. Who you are. Mm -hmm. So we're living proof and we want to just, defy the odds, you know, for people that think that, you know, in order to transition that you need your cross-sex hormones, because that just puts us at a disadvantage because we have to be dependent on who? The medical system. Exactly. And also run the risk that whatever it is that you're taking is synthetic and can cause a lot of health issues. And although the, the community doesn't want to hear that and they don't want to believe that, but any medication that you take that comes from synthetic form, which is all big pharma's, um, whatever you want to call it, contribution to humanity, it all definitely has side effects. And all you have to do is listen to one of those commercials, ask your doctor about blah, blah, blah. Side effects are a mile long. But we're not here to judge anyone. It's your journey, your path. You have to do what you got to do. But recommendations are get in and get out. And, you know, so that you can do the least amount of damage. But we're enjoying, you know, just being able to not be dependent on that. Mm -hmm. You know, like when we were on the road, it was really hard. It was. Because, you know, you had to inject and everything. And you cut your finger one time. Yeah. And it was kind of like an omen. Yeah. I mean, not just a cut. It was, it was like a gash. You know, opening up her ampule, and it just like, you know. And I don't even know, you know, what, um, as you get older, what benefits there are to taking cross-sex hormones, actually. It's more of a, I believe personally that it's more of a placebo effect mm -hmm. than anything else. And placebo, I mean that it's more of a mental yeah. um, effect than it is a physical effect. I can understand if you're 20 right. and stuff and your body's like still growing and changing and things. But as we middle age, yeah. get older, these things don't, you know, do anything really to change. Yeah, you can't really get rid of those secondary characteristics that have been set in stone there with, you know, the small amount of hormones that you're given by your doctor. Because, you know, it's just they would have to give you outrageous quantity that would be detrimental to your health you know and like you said if you're younger and still developing, developing as a human being yeah, yeah i mean but, and then even then if you you know how we feel about puberty blockers and things like that but we feel that it's not really necessary mm -hmm. to take puberty blockers and it's actually hurtful yeah. to take puberty yeah. blockers they're stopping your natural know. development and yeah you know, and I know a lot of people want to stop that natural development and thinking that they're going to do something good for themselves. But in reality, you really have to weigh the, the benefits versus the contradiction and what actually happens to your body. I mean, being you is something that's innate. You don't have to do anything to be you, in my opinion. Being you is just 
like a natural sense of being, yeah. you know what I mean? If you have to do something to yourself to be you, then it's not really being you, you know? So, but you guys know how we feel about that kind of stuff. And we've been back and forth on certain things, but certain things that we've never been back and forth on them. And that is, you know, kids being affected by these cross-sex hormones and puberty blockers and stuff. So um, we feel very strongly about that, that they're not necessary and that they're actually detrimental. Um, but yeah, you have your own opinions. Yeah. 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 But going on with our day, um, our week and stuff, we got into a little bit of an argument yesterday and almost didn't have a good time last night. And just to let people know how, you know, that we're human and that we make mistakes and that we still have lots of growing to do. I know myself as a person, I need to grow up a lot. And one of the biggest things that I struggle with is my, my defensive nature. I've written about it in my blog in the past. You know, it was something as simple as just watching a TV show. We were watching a show called Undercover Boss. I'm sure you've watched it before. Um, and there's there's incidences where, you know, it was like, you know, there there's moments in the show where it really connects emotionally to you and stuff. And at the end, the owner, the guy who runs the company, is always the benevolent giver and mm -hmm. stuff. And, you know, oh, I want to give this person, you know, a trust fund for their kids in the future. and Or I want to buy them a new car because they're a good employee. And then you get kind of wrapped up emotionally. So we were supposed to leave uh, to go to the, the Toad Creek um, uh, little brewery, town brewery. You know, and go we don't drink. Music. And we drink club soda. And I wanted to stick around. And then you didn't want to stay. But then we ended up kind of getting into a little bit of an argument over just nothing, really. Yeah. Nothing. And I left with a bad attitude and got to the toad and we were going to not go because the parking was, oh God, so it was just a mess. You know, emotionally, I was just kind of like disconnected. And the fact is though, if I would have disconnected completely, I would have missed out on a real blessing because um, we had a great time there. We met. A couple, mm -hmm. um, after we had been listening to some music, uh, this lady sat down with her husband, and her husband's like a big Texan. Um, I'm not oh, I'm sorry, boy. Yeah. I'm sorry, boy. And uh, yeah, because they've only known each other for a month. Uh, oh, they got married? They did. Right? I know. But she's this cute little thing, and she just gave me the biggest smile, and she walked up to me, and she just whispered in my ear and just said, you know, you're a beautiful, beautiful woman. And I really just want to encourage you to keep doing what you're doing, you know, live your truth and blah, blah, blah. And she's like, I feel compelled. I feel compelled to give you something. And I just, I'm a, I'm a lover. I'm a Gemini. And, you know, I was like, um, okay. And I'm like, I just this. I mean, yeah. are these people swingers? <laughs> you just yeah. never know what's going right. on with people. And but I just got got a sense that she was genuine and she was very very kind. And she ended up giving me this amazing Wonder Woman bracelet. I mean, I don't know, for lack of a better word, yeah. you know, it's like this really cool, like, yeah. and it was full of love. And she gave me lots of like energy from her you know and just like really like encouraged me mm -hmm. and you know it was just an awesome experience to feel that kind of positivity coming from someone and and then the boyfriend uh, who lives in texas or lived in texas and mentality is like good old boy very judgmental christian but learn something from the fact that Okay, well, here's this trans person, and but gosh, they look like they're in love, and it's just this whole mentality changed, and he became very open to the transgender thing. And when I told yeah. them that I was actually born a female, 
because I, at first I'm sure he thought that, yeah. you know, I was a guy into a trans, you know, person, mm-hmm. and it's like, you know, we're both trans, and actually I was born female, but then she was born male, and it was like his eyes opened up, and it's like we taught him something that, you know, he had never experienced before or, or knew. Yeah, he, he thought that people transition just for attention, right. that they do, and, you know, there may be some people that do do that, um, but he's like, but the, when I looked at you guys, it was like you were looking at each other with eyes of love, and 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 I was just like, and "Who am I? That. Why why can I? What is it about me that I think that this is, something's wrong?" But there's nothing wrong with two people loving each other, and you know. And then when he found out that you were actually born a female and that you transitioned. And that you didn't take testosterone, and he was even blown away by that. Yeah, you know, so I won't take anything. You know, it's yeah, just, you know, it's, it's just who you are. You know, and she was just again very, very, um, very kind to me. She fell in love with him deeper because right? she, she yeah. saw how much open he became, and he wasn't this close-minded, judgmental person. And it was almost like we were led to that place last night for a reason, and there were. To me, there were forces that didn't want us to go there, and that's why the whole, and I find that a lot with your, yours and I when we argue, it's like forces that intervene that don't want either a growth to take place or, or a blessing to take place. And I said to you when we are in the car, we were still having the discussion, I said, you're going to have a good time, and you're going to be able to like get past that moment of whatever it is that you felt, you know, whatever it is that happens when we disagree. And one of the lessons I believe it is like you have to learn to let go because every second of every moment changes, you know. Yeah. And you may feel an emotion the second, but two seconds later, that emotion shouldn't be there anymore because then you're missing out on another new and greater emotion. And that's the lesson I believe the universe tries to teach people. And she had a really great attitude about things and approach and everything. And you know, we're all we're not really human. We're we're spiritual beings yeah. on this earthly plane, on this physical realm. Gender isn't really as important as you would think it would be. Um, I know that people get classified into the boxes that society wants to, wants to put us all in, but we are all very much energy. We are very much all eternal energy. And, you know, she got it. She understood that. Mm-hmm. She connected with us in a way that she recognized that energy that, is within us. That's how she was drawn. Yeah, she's, she's like, I don't know what it is about you, you two, but there's just this beautiful energy that you guys have. And, you know, I mean, we, you know, even being frustrated with you, I, I still apparently had loving eyes towards you because that man looked at us and he's like, oh my gosh, those two are in love. I mean, there's, there's no doubt about that. It's a beautiful thing to see and to behold. And, you know, we've been through lots and lots of things and stuff, and we've made lots and lots of mistakes along the way. And you've made lots of concessions to all the things that I was going through, and you've done a lot of things that you, you would never have imagined to do, you know, and lost a lot of your reputation and community and blah, blah, blah. But... At the end of the day, we're all just human beings, and we're all just on this journey, and we're all just discovering and growing and learning. And, you know, that's the big takeaway from all of this is that, you know, we shouldn't let negativity keep us from experiencing life. Because life continues, even through that negative attitude that we might have. If we don't get past it, then we don't get to the next positive learning experience. Experience. And I think that was a big lesson last night, you know, missing out on things because we're holding on, you know, it's it's like holding on to this perceived pain because it's just perceived. It's really no no discomfort, no whatever. If we find out the argument was based on how small and how minute it is, and then that can just ruin an entire evening. And so going, okay, next. And, you know, it's something that, that again, I've grown up with this defensive nature that I need to just kind of drop, drop, drop more and more and more. And, you know, as I develop as a person, 
and become the best expression of me that I can be, I believe that that defensive nature starts to really shed itself and it's not completely gone, unfortunately, but I know that through events like last night, through, you know, a moment of, you know, receiving so much love and support from a stranger, you know, um, it, it was, it was a very, um, healing time for me. And, you know, I think that people that are on this journey of life at different stages, like for her, it was about giving up things. Mm -hmm. it, it was about showing love. You know, she's experienced lots of loss in her life. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's like everything has a purpose, mm -hmm. you know, and what was meant for me was meant for her in another way. So it's kind of like this it's a dance. iron sharpening iron it's type dance, thing, you know, it's reciprocal. And it's like this cyclical life flow where, you know, we are all connected. I mean, I don't want to sound like some kind of guru true, or, you true. know, whatever, but the fact is that we're all connected. And that woman, what she did yesterday was something that connected to us mm -hmm. and the man, her boyfriend, that connected with him and taught him another lesson. It's like this, this interwoven pattern of beautiful energy that helps mankind become better in, in their own way. You so know? the removal of the ego, because the ego wants to feel the victim of the ego wants to feel vindicated and, you know, feel what it feels because it's been hurt and then it wants to, you know, just lay on that, that, I can't even think of a word. It's just, just such a, a dark cloud. And it's like, why allow that dark cloud to hinder the beauty that you can be receiving? and the blessings that you can be receiving and the growth of the challenges in life, you know? And, and it takes time to learn that lesson, but... It's you know, important to it learn is. those lessons because if you don't learn those lessons, then the universe allows you to experience another moment where you might perceive it as a negative experience, but it's actually another challenge moment for you to take a hold of the reins and to grow as a human being and to grow as a person. So even though, you know, like someone gets into a car accident and gets hurt and, you know, um, something is learned from that experience. Exactly. You know, everything that happens to us happens for a reason. Our diseases, our challenges, our accidents, whatever it is, breakups, it all has a reason behind it. And we're here a spirit being having the human experience to grow and evolve and become closer to our godliness, closer to you know the, the sense of that spirit being that's enlightened, closer to all that. And like I said, we don't we don't have it all together. Obviously, um, there's a lot of things that we're still maturing and growing as individuals. Right. Um, but you know that woman and her and her boyfriend also don't have everything together either. And they also have lessons in life that they're, the universe is trying to teach them or God is trying to teach them. And, you know, everybody's on their own, like, pace of growth. And your pace of growth is only as fast as you allow it to be. I mean, you can grow faster if you wanted to, mm -hmm. and you can slow it down if you want to. It's like, it's like a treadmill. You're in control. You have the ability to speed it up or slow it down. But do you realize that when you slow it down, you're slowing down your progress and you're allowing fear to take over. And the ego, the ego is like, well, I want to, I'm not ready yet. Says who? Says your fear is telling you you're not ready yet and you really don't want, you know, can handle all that or, or you want to like just, it's like when you're, at a pool, and it's really cold. You either jump in and get it out of the way, or it's going to be like a little toe, and you're going to experience more pain that way than to just let it, like my whole say, shit or get off the pot, you know, that kind of thing. Um, or, or it's also like maybe, like I've been discovering here recently with the workout regimen that mm -hmm. we've been doing, either you can choose mm -hmm. to do high reps and mm -hmm. just like, you know, 
many trans women are like this. They'll jump on the treadmill. Mm -hmm. They'll do the elliptical. They'll do, I remember that one trans woman would do these little pink weights and, you know, these little simple, you know, I don't know, finger exercises <laughs> or something. Right. Or you could take a real good look and do some hard work and to rip some serious muscle yeah. and, and allow your body to change by putting stress on it and to, by ripping muscle and building muscle, right. sleeping, yeah. eating right. I mean, Drinking that's the harder thing to do, mm -hmm. but, you know, lifting more weight. And mm -hmm. the pain of that yeah. is what brings more results. Exactly. And it speeds up your metabolism, allows the body to burn fat, you get toned, you, you really see results. But if you're sitting there just like, ah, you know, it, you ain't good. You ain't I don't get want anywhere. to nail, yeah. pulling the weight off. And, and you ain't going to get anywhere. The same thing goes for your spiritual growth. You, you take it and realize, yeah, it's going to be painful. But it's going to be more painful not to deal with it because you're still going to be lingering with the same crap that continues to hold you down from your growth. So why not just like pull the scab out or, you know, just take that tape off and, and, and deal with it and allow it to heal or just keep, you know. It's like, you know, you've seen in like some of these um, action adventure movies, you know, like the famous one where Rambo mm -hmm. gets like impaled or something mm -hmm. and he chooses to just dig in and yank yeah. it out, you know. You're like, it's like, oh, I can't. Oh, oh, oh I'm already, I'm already. Or that one, yeah. what was that one recent movie that, about the guy in Mars, remember? Oh, oh yeah. Had, he had gotten impaled yeah, by all the stuff. some metal thing, yeah. and he just went in and. You're just prolonging the torture. Right? Yeah. Prolonging the torture. It's like, deal with it, face it, feel it, own it, and you're able to let it go, and you're able to grow. I mean, that's, you know. And that's the thing. Yeah. Life, you have to like confront. You mm -hmm. can't evade. You can't bury. You can't hide. Yeah. You can't run away. You can't, you know, pretend that it's not there. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, there's mm -hmm. certain things about us being trans that is never going to go away. No. Those are things you're just going to have to deal with. You're mm -hmm. going to have to just realize that this is what it is. Yeah. This is the life that we've been given. Yeah. And, you know, barring some miraculous miracle of some kind, this is what you got. Yeah, so, I, don't, I don't foresee any miracle of anything happening because it is what it is. Either you learn to live, you know, live with what you got, do the best that you got, enjoy your life, be. Because that's all, that's the only control you got is to just be. Everything else, the promise of the promised land of the... Uh, if you take this potion, you'll turn into it. No, it, it doesn't work. If that you way. like, if you only could get this surgery, or if you could yeah. only get this procedure, or if you could only like have your throat like yeah. do like have your voice change, change. And it's like it's like and that's not worth that because after that's all done, yeah. and you're still standing there, yeah, you're still you, and you're still you, yeah. except for the fact that you're now. A weaker version of you mm -hmm. because you've allowed these surgeries to weaken you yeah. in your physical body or the synthetic hormones to destroy your endocrine system and create problems like cancer heart attack strokes diabetes and name it and the list goes on and on because you know I mean trans women specifically these effects will absolutely reverse themselves over time mm -hmm. and the thing that won't reverse itself, though, um, and it's a very, like, deceptive thing, too, mm -hmm. is how your mind perceives how you look. So, like, an anorexic, mm -hmm. you know, looks at themselves in a mirror, mm -hmm. and because they're not eating, they still see themselves as fat, yeah. Yeah. and they're, like, maybe almost dying, yeah. like Karen Carpenter yeah. actually literally died, and thousands of others have literally died from it your mind is conditioned to think that you look a certain way. So taking these hormones, you think, oh my gosh, it's this. I've got, I've got boobs now, yeah. or I've got, you know, a fake, you know, whatever, right. and this and that. And it's like, well, after a period of time, you start believing and seeing things that aren't there. So, and then you're hurting yourself. I and mean, it's like, why not take the, 
the road of just be you, express as you wish, love yourself enough to give yourself the gift of health, because this is the only body you got. And if you keep tearing at it and tearing at it by doing things that will break your system down, you're not going to be able to enjoy the life you want. You're going to end up in a casket. And I know a lot of people feel, well, if I don't do what I do, then I'm going to end up dead. Trust me, when you get near to the point of being so sick and dying, you're going to wish you weren't dying. Because that's, that's how the human body is made. We want to survive. But when you're younger or when you're like in denial, you don't think about getting sick and dying. No. You know, those are the last things on your mind. But when something happens, you can change your life. Trust me, you'll think differently. There's a young trans woman that, you know, I did a video on, um, her name is Angela Vanity, and she saw a video of, like, older trans women, and it freaked her out. She was, like, literally, you yeah. know, she's at the place in her life, I mean, I'm sure there's many of you who know who I'm talking about, beautiful trans, young trans woman, and, um, you know, she's living la vida loca, because, you know, she looks beautiful, and, and, and age is not a factor mm -hmm. at this point in time. But as age becomes a factor, these hormones have a rebounding effect yes. on the life of a male to female transsexual. And what happens is that, according to Angela Vanity, people start looking like monsters because the surgeries that they did maybe 20 years before start sagging. Um, their body starts breaking down the they're not able to process estrogen in the way that they were able to before, and it turns into testosterone, which then masculinizes them even more. It's and then diminishing the returns. The body's always trying to find homeostasis, which means balance. And in this quest of balance, and the body knows it's biology, you may not want it, but the body knows it's biology, it'll do everything it can to bring you back into that biology, you know? So you you got to be careful. Too much is not great, and for a period of time, it may be working for you, but there's going to come a time where that pendulum that went that way is going to come this way again. Yeah. That's, that's how it works. And that's the danger is that, you know, hormones, more so than even the physical, which is already dangerous enough, mm -hmm. but the danger is that they fool you to believe that they trick you to believe that you're something that you're not, literally, you know, and that's the danger, is that you buy into it, and therefore you're frustrated when people don't see what you want them to see, you know. Just live, live your life, you know, be happy, be well, be in harmony, work on, because gender is just a very small portion of the woes that ails you. There's deep, deep childhood traumas, self-loathing, I mean, it's just a slew of different things for each and every one of us that led us to where we are today. And if you learn to be gentle and forgiving and accepting and, and try to understand your boundaries and try to understand who you are, not as a physicality, but as a spiritual being, and you, become, you make peace with yourself and others, your life will end up a lot better. I mean, honestly, you know, I wish it was as easy as... Wonder Twin Powers activate form of you, form of me, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know, and we could like change bodies, you know, and stuff like that. But it's just not going to happen in this lifetime. Maybe in the next, maybe. but or maybe you know, we won't have to come in these bodies and we'll be able to just float wherever it is in another dimension and not be bound because these these bodies are a form of enslavement because they keep us. I mean here in this gravity plane where we can't, you know, really escape. escape. So, you know, get it right and you don't have to come here and play the game all over again, you know. And that's the thing, you know, but the lessons that we learn in this life are things that are going to carry through it, through eternity for us. So it's important that we learn these lessons now. We, it's important that we learn how to love, mm -hmm. how to not be so selfish, how to not be defensive that's my life lesson yeah. right now. be patient how to be yeah. patient how to be yeah. forgiving yeah. how to how to how to like think of others before yourself mm -hmm. you know there's so many things that i would have learned or had been told about when i was a little kid growing up mm -hmm. that i had learned through christianity that was being taught to me 
but the application wasn't there. There wasn't like, there was like this false sense of it. And now I'm learning lessons of life that actually mean something, not just something that I see in a piece of scripture, but something that actually affects me. And my life is actually changing through it. You know? It's like going to college, you learn all these theories and you, you learn the stuff through the books, but when you go out in the real world and you're working in a hospital or in a nursing home or whatever it is, and you're like, remember, well, the book said this and this, but then the actual interaction with the patient is totally different. You get your experience, not from school, but hands-on. Yeah, I remember it, in video production, we never really got our hands on the lights and the cameras as much. I mean, and then after I graduated and then went to work at a TV station, that's where I really started learning because that's when you get your hands on things and you learn what works, what doesn't. It's not just about theory. Exactly. You know, it's like, you know, like um, an army officer. So we talk about how the soldiers, enlisted soldiers, feel like they're not like aware of what it's like to be in combat mm -hmm. situations and stuff. And it's that kind of thing. We have to learn through the lessons of life. It doesn't matter if you've been educated. It doesn't matter what kind of degree you may or may not have. I mean, the degree of life experience is the highest degree that you can earn, you know. And that's what we're on this plane to learn, is to all get a degree on life. Mm -hmm. You know, not the one that you hang on your wall that you, you know you go to school for in college and end up getting all these student loans and then walk away with this little paper oh, and such and such. So then you could collect more material things so you could be more enslaved and go work your nine to five or nine to whatever it is and be in traffic and never get to be with your family because you're so busy making money so you can pay for stuff that you don't need. A vicious cycle. That's not what we're here to do. Yeah. It's far from it, you know. But that's what we've been entangled in and been like sucked into that reality, which is really not a reality. It's not. It's not. It's a, uh, you know, like that woman said yesterday at, uh, at the Toad, it's like this, sometimes you wake up in the morning and you feel like, wait a minute, did I just come out of my real life now? Mm -hmm. And now I'm living in this, you know, existence of yeah. like something else it's or a dream stage my my right. dream stage or yeah. my real life right. and you really don't know really you, don't you know. really don't because there's so many things that you know we're exposed to even as we sleep that we don't even or that we feel like we're sleeping mm -hmm. there's so much that we just don't know that we just don't understand that we have yet to learn and you know that's the important thing is that we shouldn't take life so seriously because we don't even know if this is even real. I know. I know. You know, it's like the Truman Show. You know, it could all be a fake production. A fake production. Of us, you know, pitted against one another, and you, know, you get upset about the dumbest things, and you get entangled in life about certain things. And you know, this gender thing. How many people devote so many hours and and, and energy on this transition and, and it's like it becomes such a thing and then at the end when years pass by and you get everything done and you're still like okay now what and is this what was really making me unhappy and I've seen it time and time again people get everything done they've got it all and they're still not happy and it's really only a privileged few who actually do get everything done yeah. whatever, whatever whatever that means yeah everything done yeah for a trans woman is to be able to get, you know, um, SRS yeah. and, and have their face, you know, surgeried and, and changed and manipulated and, you know, but after that, what and you've got everything done, yeah, and then what else is there? And they're still single and they're still unhappy and they're still striving for something else, but there's nothing else to strive for because now, like somebody wrote yesterday, younger, uh, MTF, 27 to be exact. The past five years they've been single. They're miserable. They, they said, transitioning didn't solve my problem. Detransitioning ain't going to solve it. So what else is there? Suicide. They were watching one of our older videos yeah. when we were living in Fort Lauderdale. And they asked you about, you know, how your detransition, why, what happened and stuff like yeah. that. And 
all of this, you know, and this person is young, young. they're beautiful, they yeah. have, you know, they have so much going for them. Um, and, you know, if you're listening right now, I mean, you have so much going for you. There's so much that you have yet to live your life for. And, you know, all of this stuff about transition really isn't what life is about, you know. You set really up not. all these goals and all these ambitious needs and, and not, you know, and wants really. And, and all for what? What in the end? What does it actually solve? What are we actually accomplishing? You know, and it's, as we think, hey, if, I, if I get from point A to point B, I'll be happy. You get to point B, you're still not happy. Well, if I get from point B to point C, I'll be happy. You're there in point C. And it's like you're missing out on life. You're missing out on such important lessons and things because you're so like tunnel visioned on what you want and what you think your life should be like. And you're missing the boat. And for an FTM, you know, you're thinking, gosh, if I could only get rid of this binder, if mm -hmm. I could only have my top surgery and life would be so much better. Mm -hmm. But then you watch videos with Carrie Callahan. Mm -hmm. You know, a, a detransitioner has been detransitioning now for maybe three or four years mm -hmm. or something. Still dealing with lots of issues and, mm -hmm. and, and traumas of life and, you know, the fact that they don't like to present femininity in the way that traditionally mm -hmm. they're expected to and they they don't like wearing makeup they don't like looking this certain way and they don't like being complimented you know things the that battle it's like battle. So the battle never ends it's so like you transition constant. that didn't solve it you detransition that didn't, didn't solve it. it so it's like so is gender really the problem and that's one of the things that about it no it's not it's not there's mm -hmm. deeper yeah. things that were allowing gender we're blaming gender for it because, you know, someone's got to take the blame. So we blame gender and think that we could fix our gender, we could align ourselves, and we could, then we'll be happy. And happiness is not something you go buy at the store. Mm -hmm. Happiness is not something you achieve. Happiness is already within you. And if you can't find that happiness within, you ain't going to find it anywhere. And you don't get prescribed happiness. No. Happiness isn't a prescription for testosterone no. or for estrogen or for anything else or for surgeries, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's within, and if you don't find that happiness within, then you're losing out on the biggest gift of all, and that's in being able to love yourself yeah. for who you are, yeah. how you are, yeah. and what you are. Yeah. You know, not letting anyone define that, not letting society define that, not letting objects and things and surgeries and materialism. If I have this dress, and if I buy this, and if I have this perfect look, and if I no, it, it's not going to happen. It's not. Because then you're always going to want more and more and more and more. Because when you age, it it all becomes so apparent that life is going to end soon. Mm -hmm. And that half your life is pretty much over. And you only have the, like, that, that second half to live. And you've wasted all your time on this obsession. Because it becomes an obsession. Really. I mean... If you look at any trans person, they are so self-consumed and self-obsessed yeah. that they miss everything that's around them. They become isolated. They have the inability to socialize with other people, you know, because they're constantly trying to live in this pain. You know, and that, I mean, what does that solve? It solves nothing because at the end of the day, you're at the same place where you were when you first started down the road. Mm -hmm. I see lots of trans women that still show pictures of their former selves mm -hmm. and their former days and stuff and talking about how far they've come and how mm -hmm. wonderful it is to be someone different. Mm -hmm. And, you know, at the end of the day, they're the same way that mm -hmm. they were well, six years changed. ago. Yeah. You Nothing's know? changed. They've I mean, changed their bodies. They've gotten rid of things that they didn't like, but they're still dealing with the depression, the unhappiness, and the anxiety. And the pain and is the still pain. there. And it, it doesn't resolve itself. Gender confusion is not resolved mm -hmm. by doing no the bodily changes. Mm -hmm. Gender confusion, gender dysphoria is resolved when you come to understand who you are, why you're here, what you are, and just be yeah. who you say that you are. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it's like gender is what it is, you know, and you know, you choose to identify with the gender that you feel most comfortable identifying with. And at, 
after that, it's on you. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't want to make society see you. You know, that's not what you're living for. You're not living for, you know, the stealth factor. I mean, you're just living mm -hmm. because it's you. It's who you are. And that's undeniable. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. I think that it's important for us to accept ourselves wherever we're at, mm -hmm. wherever we're at in life, whatever stage we find ourselves in, that we accept ourselves, that we love ourselves. I mean, we learn to understand our shortcomings, you know, and we're Asperger, which a lot of us in the trans community are. Don't let that Asperger define you or control you. Because then, then we're just victims. You know, we have to become aware of our behavior, analyze it. And when you become aware, that's when healing begins. And you start feeling the, that feeling that you feel when you're getting ready to be defensive or your ego or your victimhood mentality kicks in. Become aware, negate, negate, replace it with another thought, and know that you're bigger than that thought. Know that you could either escalate and allow the rest of the day to get ruined and miss out on wonderful things like yesterday. Yeah. which I think it's something, you know, and realize, you know what, I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to allow my ego, my programming to take over. I'm going to change that programming and, and I'm going to free myself. And it's a lesson that we learn. Yeah. You know, it's not something that, you know, we could choose to to grow mm -hmm. at, an, at an accelerated pace mm -hmm. or we can look at this experience and then repeat the same mistake again and have to learn Again. Over and again and again. Because the universe again. does that. Yeah. It's, kind it's of like, okay, I'm going to test you now. It's like, fail oh, again. Oh, oh man. man. Failed again. Oh, man. Instead of going, I remember I get to a certain level in a video game. <laughs> and then, you know, you get to a certain place, you got there, and then you fail. Yeah. And, and then you have start to go all, all the way over. back yeah. to the first, like, part of it. And you're like, I'm already so good at that level, and I'm already good at this level. It's only here where I'm messing yeah. up. And then, and then you have to learn. Like you said, the universe will continue to test, you know. And so we could either go, ah, okay, I remember this. I, and last time, I didn't do so good. Mm -hmm. And I keep repeating, and we fight, and we get upset at one another. And, and it's like, and then it ruins the rest of the day because we can't say, okay, messed up, and just go wipe your knees, get up, and keep going. No, it's like that hurting and that wanting to, you know, it's ego, wanting to feel a victim. And it's like, you victim of what? What are we victims of? You know? Yeah, it's, it's a self-perceived victimization exactly. that we go through. And exactly. as soon as we, we realize that so much of all of this perceived thing is nothing but a mirage mm -hmm. and an illusion, then we can go past it mm -hmm. and, you know, see every moment for what they are. They're moments. They're not things that we build our, you know, our, our stubbornness on or our defensiveness on, we build as we incrementally grow from each experience. And you don't hold grudges, you don't mm -hmm. hold things and say, you know, like I, I've been saying, you know, oh, it's already ruined. Yeah. Oh, it's already messed up. Oh. It's like, what's oh. ruined? What's messed up? All you have to do is go, okay, boom, you know? You can choose to like, you know, it's like the etch a sketch. You, you can choose to just Erase it and then start over. Start yeah. and then if you mess up, erase it yeah. and then start over. Or you can be frustrated and keep on doing squiggly lines, yeah. trying to figure it out. And can say that's true, and I can't do anything with it. I can't. I'm just, I just gotta. It's like, we have the ability to say, okay, I'm not gonna dwell on that. I'm gonna let it go. Yeah, we are, you know, in effect, creator gods of our own. You know, and we have the ability to shape our futures. Yeah. To shape our present yeah. and to be able to manipulate mm -hmm. our futures, yeah. you know, and, and not let the past, and the past meaning the moment that you got into, because if you think about it, okay, right now, this is the moment, it's gone, next moment, gone, so you got into a little tiff right here, do we stay in the little tiff, or do we go, okay, next moment, it's like a baby, you know how yeah. babies, they, you know, it's like you could change their perception or their attention, they're like, out of sight, out of mind. It's like, eh? And it's like, look over here. And it's like, they don't sit there in the same as animals because they're in that innocent state. Right. You know, an animal doesn't remember that you just kicked it in the butt. It's like it goes back to licking your face and loving you because yeah. it's, they live at the moment. Sometimes I wonder if animals are more, like, developed. Oh, they are. As, as, as uh, living, sentient beings than, 
than even humans are because humans always seem to want to hold grudges and always want to look back and you know I mean you could kick like you said you could kick your pet dog one day and then it comes back and it licks you and even a day like a few seconds later it forgets and it's gone licking you and loving you you know and, and babies are the same way and children are the same way they have this innocence about them we need to return to that innocence we need to realize that we can't hold on to pain we can't hold on to anger you feel it you own it and then you let it go and um, I think a lot of this also has to do with how our diet is because a lot of times what we end up doing to ourselves is we end up you know making ourselves toxic from what we eat and how we you know like interact with the environment around us mm -hmm. through the food that we eat so if we eat stuff that causes us stress mm -hmm. if we eat stuff that raises our stress levels and stuff and cortisol, cause, yeah, and cortisol levels, levels yeah. go up and you know I mean we've talked about it before about Spiro for trans women raises cortisol levels mm -hmm. and puts them in danger um, synthetic testosterone it, it raises you know blood pressure and you know it stresses the body out alcohol all over yeah I mean what did you find out about alcohol oh, with you know, diet? your body alcohol is considered very toxic by your liver and so much so that whenever you drink the first thing your liver is going to do is have to resolve with the toxic that you just put in it it could be working on something else but you drink and all of a sudden its priority is to get rid of that toxic that you just put in there and it it also does mess up your brain right. so it's like my father's an alcoholic and I could very well have become an alcoholic and I was drinking a lot you know at one point and I realized that it doesn't solve anything and especially if you're on on testosterone and you're drinking you're adding extra bullets to that chamber where you're playing Russian roulette so what a moment of pleasure a moment of getting a buzz learn how to be high on life you know it's like last night we went out we had club soda with lemon and I didn't feel like I needed the alcohol at all it's like you learn to tap into your natural high you learn to be clear and accepted and vigilant of everything that's around you and you learn how to enjoy that and to have to numb yourself it's almost like alcohol allows a false person to come out instead of being your true self and I know it's painful to be true self but you need as human beings to learn I think that's that. what that's what uh, the gentleman that we were talking to and his girlfriend the gentleman talked about was he was saying that how is it that you can like not drink or mm -hmm. not take drugs mm -hmm. and stuff like that when it helps to numb pain and mm -hmm. things and it's like you know what what we need to realize is that what you were finding out about alcohol is that it puts a stress on the liver that causes it to do things and to try to clean itself out from the poison of mm -hmm. alcohol and it keeps it from being able to do more beneficial things mm -hmm. for your body it's like so your liver is doing something that it doesn't need to do mm -hmm. which is to try to repair this body from the clean poison, out the stuff that you know in there yeah and then at the end of the day the pain hey there Terry the pain does not go away drinking only masks the pain it's like putting a band-aid you have this massive gush of a cut that's infected and you give it a band-aid you ain't gonna make that cut the infection go away you need to treat the infection tr treat the cause of the problem you know and and that's and the thing is if you're emotionally connected to your alcohol if you're emotionally connected to your food mm -hmm. if you're mostly connected to sugar mm -hmm. then that is going to drive you to do things that you're going to regret and they're all addictions and addictions that damage your, your biology yeah they literally destroy yourself you are what you eat and that's the most true statement food can be your your uh, medicine or it could be your destroyer you know as well as whatever it is that we use to try to mask our pain drugs alcohol food sex whatever it is that we're using as a form of a mask it's the problems don't go away by masking it it only gets worse so you need to go in there and really find out why why am I in pain you know and then we need to stop blaming other people for our pains we need to like take responsibility and try to really dissect even if it means going back to childhood 
even if it means keeping a journal and writing and going into your inner child and talking to your inner child and trying to heal that inner child because it's that inner child that's still hurting and longing for love. And that's the important thing is that we need to take responsibility. We need to take accountability for what goes on in our lives and quit making excuses and quit trying to blame our parents or our siblings or our friends or our past generation, you know, I mean, or our, our, ra our race, you know, I mean, it's like you are in charge of you. And, you know, it's your responsibility to take care of you. Mm -hmm. And the most important thing that you can give to yourself is the gift of health. Yeah. It's the gift of realizing that whatever you put into your body, it's not just, it's not just food. Mm -hmm. It's not just some, you know, like, you know, it's not like some thing for, you know, like, oh, I, I like this because it tastes good. Right. I mean, you can't base your life on taste and on your five senses because it'll lead you to your grave. You, know, you need to take responsibility. You need to like find out what makes you tick and realize that food is a drug. You need to put the right type of foods to heal your body so you can find true happiness. And there's nothing more uh, true than true happiness comes from love and health. Everything else, materialistic things, momentarily pleasurable things, don't bring you happiness. It might release some serotonin in your brain and make you believe that that's making you happy, but that's short-lived. And now you've done something to your body that's going to create problems. So it's important to do a lot of self-work, self-healing, go within and really find out, why do I feel this way? Why do I still hold on to this pain of childhood when I'm no longer a child, I'm an adult now. I don't have to behave the same way I behaved when I was a kid. You know? Yeah, it reminds me, you know, I growing up, um, there's this verse in the Bible that said, when I was a child, I spoke as a child, I thought as a child, but now I've grown up and, you know, I don't do childish things anymore. And I think that when it comes to food, um, we're still, many of us, not all of us, obviously, many of us are still 12. Mm -hmm. We still like our little cravings, our little cap and crunch, or, you know, for me it was sweet tarts, it was, you know, it was like, you know, for others it may be ice cream, it may be, you know, different types of addictions that linger from our childhood. And our childhood is what, you know, kind of dictates what we do as adults, you know, how we eat and, you know, the things that that excite us and everything and they're driven by our childish cravings and we're not children anymore no, we're adults you know, I don't know that stop and go. but yeah there's there's a lot of self-work that we as spirits having a human experience need to do and most of all it's so important that we love ourselves love ourselves enough to know what's good and what's bad to know you know what we should be doing and what we should not be doing. And, you know, we're here to grow. That's the bottom line. That's the only reason we're here on this planet, is to grow. It's not to buy the newest uh, gadget, to get the greatest car, to build up our bank account, because you can't take it with you when you go. And in the end, those things don't really make you happy. And the sooner we learn that, and the sooner we realize that we have a lot of work to do as spirits, and leave all that materialistic stuff on the side and really do the dirty work, you know, and just grow it. And we can't let someone else do the dirty work for us, you know. I mean, a lot of times religion actually tries to make us think that, you know, we can just kind of let God mm -hmm. take care of it and stuff, when the reality is that God, whatever you want to believe in, you know, is being God or this ultimate creator of all things really doesn't want to take on your burden he wants you she wants you mm -hmm. to be able to use the situations that you've been given in life and to grow and to it's like okay you get trained a certain way you're put into a, a, a live situation mm -hmm. it's not like God's like saying uh, here here's what you need to do it's like Take what you learn and apply and it apply now. It. Right. 
that's what the universe wants to do. The universe wants to say, look, take what you've learned, and now it's time for you to apply it to your circumstance. And if you do that, then you will grow. And you will be rewarded. Yeah. yeah. And if you don't, then you have to go back to the same, that yeah. other level again. Yeah, over you know? and over again. So, I mean, you know, they say that God helps those who help themselves is, is, not, is not a good way to live. But the truth is that, you know, God did not create us as humans in order for us to just be, dependent. you know, dependent and carried carried like as if we don't know what we're doing and you know that's just that's just a way to allow people to make excuses for themselves and people like, dependent on the systems political system religious system financial systems you know it's like free yourselves you know grow evolve and if you do free yourself then you're able to like advance as a human and advance as a spirit being and to be able to like do things that you never even thought you were capable of doing because strength i'm learning isn't about how big your muscles are mm -hmm. it's really about that inner fortitude that you have like you see these athletes say american ninja warrior or like um these ninjas and stuff like say like bruce lee or something you know they weren't big guys. They're not like the rock where, mm -hmm. you know, they're like showing off their muscles or anything, but they have this inner core strength. chi mm -hmm. strength inside of them where they were able to do things that were like unimaginable. And, and everybody's body is different. I mean, you look at Wonder Woman in the movie. She's a big girl, you know, and it's like if that big girl ended up starving herself to try to fit into what she thought she needed to look like, she would get sick and look emaciated. You know, so everyone's got to work within their boundaries and their bodies and allow their bodies to do what the body knows how to do. Yeah, you know? looking at a scale, um, counting calories as yeah. we were doing maybe two months ago, is not a way to live. That's a way mm -hmm. to stress yourself out even more right. and to put unnecessary pressure on yourself to do things that you weren't really meant to do. You're meant to allow your body to achieve balance mm -hmm. by centering itself mm -hmm. and staying out of its way. Yeah. You know, because once you get involved in the process, then that's where you taint your ability to get to the center. Because it's you're putting in your notion what you think you should weigh, what you think you should look like, and you know it's like you gotta let the body heal itself. And if the body heals itself, it will lose the fat weight that it needs to lose. It changes body composition so that you look the best you that you could be. And that's what it's about. It's yeah. not about you looking like that girl in the magazine yeah. or that guy in the fitness, yeah. you know, the video. I mean, it's it's about you being the best you mm -hmm. you can be. And that's trans people. Obviously, right. there are certain things that we're not going to be able to achieve right. that we want to achieve. But I mean, I would love to be six foot. I would love to have you know uh, an Abraham you know, you know, one of those things. And I would love all sorts of things. But it ain't never going to happen. Too, it ain't going to happen. This is as good as it gets, Charlie. All I can do is be healthy. You know, heal myself, look the best that I could look for my age. I'm 53 years old. You know, and, and be healthy and happy, you know, and stop battling me. Stop allowing these Asperger um, episodes to, like, ruin our lives. Because the battling is what ages you. Yeah. You know, that unnecessary stress, that's what actually puts the lines on your forehead and mm -hmm. the creases in your, on your chin and, mm -hmm. you know, I, all these things, you know, and that's really what causes all the problems to happen yeah. is that, you take into the, these things into account. You don't smile as much. Right. You you always have like this low yeah. countenance about you, and then before you know it, you've got lines on your face and you're living you know, on what you think life should be and how unfair. And I want this, and I used to have that, and it's like can't live in would have, should have, could have. You got to live in what is now and be grateful. Gratitude is one of those things that's amazing. And the more grateful you are, the universe has a way of rewarding you. And not that you should do things to be rewarded. You should do things because that's how it is. You know, 
and just try to be as happy as you can and grateful as you can and let the rest you know flow with the river not against it and i lived in that world for a very long time where it was shoulda coulda woulda i wish i would have done this mm -hmm. i wish i could have done that yeah. differently i wish i had the approval of this person and i wish i had this person in my life but you know i have you mm -hmm. and we have each other right. we have our love for each other mm -hmm. and we have this ability to grow mm -hmm. as two people you know that you know there's so many people out there in the trans community who have no one at all oh my and they're so lonely it doesn't matter how beautiful they may be how handsome they are mm -hmm. i mean they're still they're still at this place where they're not letting go of certain things and the lessons of the universe are being taught but they're not learning them and then they they get empty and they get like lonely and then they wish that they had somebody but and they get suicidal they get suicidal and it doesn't matter if they're again it doesn't matter how they look what they what they do or don't do with their body it's like they end up just shriveling up and you know dying alone with I, a cat or a dog on their side and you know and i want really a cat someday but you know as far as you know being able to have love in my life it's like such a blessing you know to be able to share this journey with you and to be able to grow as two twin souls that we are. and that's what we're here for relationships are difficult and they're hard but they're so rewarding in the end because when you finally get it when you finally grow as twin souls that's that's the biggest reason we're here and that's the lesson that we're here and as twin souls we can get so much further in our spiritual growth than if we're alone because you know, it's easy when you're alone not to get bothered. Oh, well, you don't have anyone to answer to, to or, or no one get to. into an argument with. But you know, instead of having arguments, you know, it's like learning and growing and understanding the behavior of one another and why we do what we do, and, and then to be able to have, you know, forgiveness and patience, you know, for that other person. And that's what true unconditional love is all about. Like you're. Oh, okay. No, I was going to say, we brambled on for over an hour. Oh, okay. Like, you're like a very much perfectionist when it comes to, you know, like OCD to the nth degree. You know, like if I take something off the hanger, it has to be just so. And you said you're better than you. Oh, my God. I'm, I'm super, like, relaxed compared to how I used to be. Yeah. So, but like the other day, it was like, I barely take something out of the closet and I don't hang it up just right and then you're like going in there and adjusting it right. and see the lesson for me to learn from the universe is that I should allow you to be able to do that without being offended right. by it without being bothered that you want things a certain way because right. I don't tell you anything I'm gonna say hey you never put this I just very quietly go and I fix it because like before in my older days or my younger days you know on time ago I would like bitch to a person well, you can never do this why can't you this organized and this that it's like that comes I learned mom yeah that comes from my mom because that's how I was raised everything had to be just so so I learned well I, mean, I, got this. I can't control how the other person organizes or not organizes things the only thing i could do if it bothers me then i just very quietly go and i fix it and that's quick fix i don't get upset at the person i don't because i never get upset at you i just go very quietly and i do it and it's like okay it's okay now it's, it's a line it's an issue that i have it's because of the way that i was raised everything had to be just sore else my mom would have a shift it she would literally like pull everything out of my tour you have to put them right and i had to sit there and fold it and pass it i felt like i was in the army you know with my mom or because at first I would hide everything under the bed or throw things in the closet. Oh my God, when she found that, I didn't mean for you to throw it in the closet, I right, for you to organize it. Mm -hmm. So I learned. And so then it became part of me and that it, it felt safe. I mean, to me being organized, it's a positive thing. I mean, who wants to live around with slob and everything all over the place and everything all dis disorganized? It feels, I don't feel safe that way. It feels like my world's out of control. Yeah. So when things are nicely <clears throat> organized, it's like, okay, it's soothing. It's very soothing for me. So what I've learned is not to bitch, argue, blame, or do whatever. I just very quietly go and I fix it. And I'm like, okay, it's done. Thank you. Yeah, you know. And you know, for me, I know that I've come a long way in that organization. I mean, 
when it came to stuff for my job mm -hmm. and equipment and things that, you know, people that knew me before, they know how meticulous I was, how mm -hmm. I never wanted people to help me, how I wanted to make sure that this went here mm -hmm. and that went there. So and you know the feeling. I know exactly so, so you know the feeling. feeling. So then as a empathetic person, you should go, well, you know what? If this was the case where I was working with my field and I had things that so and somebody would come in and they wouldn't do it exactly as I want, you would probably want to go and fix it the way you want. Well, I didn't want them to touch it. Right. So yeah. I, I hope that lets I, you understand. Well, like, yeah. If I see a hanger out like that, that's like, that hanger doesn't belong that way. Let me fix it. Right. Or if like the jacket is like crooked or whatever, I want to go and fix it. Just like you would like to fix your equipment. So mm -hmm. we're very much alike, <laughs> you know? <laughs> That's I mean, scary part. Yeah, exactly. Really and that's why we're twin shows, and that's why we're together. That's why you've grown so much in yeah. the last couple of years. Yeah, because I'm like, like, oh my God, that was me? Oh, okay. Fixing that one. Change. <laughs> yeah. If, yeah. if I can change, this person can change, change too. Yeah. yeah, so, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm glad. Yes. I'm glad. You know, I know not a lot of people watching right now, but we do these things. I mean, it's kind of selfish. We do it for us too, you yeah. know, just be able to work things out yeah. and to grow and, and to get to teach somebody open. something. Yeah, well, yeah, and and whoever listens and yeah. and wants to, you know, apply anything that we have to to, to say, sure, you know, absolutely. and and stuff, then you know, then it's a bonus, yeah. you know. But for us, you know, I mean, it's like Facebook's always kind of been you know, my diary of sorts and stuff. And it's gotten me into some trouble because I've been so open about things and, you know, said things that I probably shouldn't have said and, you know, made comments that I probably shouldn't have made or stood up for things that I probably shouldn't have stood up for. But at the, at the end of the day, mm -hmm. we're all like learning. It's a growth. You know, Sorry, it's a growth. And, you, do. you know, it's, it's a beautiful thing to be able to, to look back and to realize where you've come from and how far mm -hmm. you've grown as an individual. Mm -hmm. And I know that through this gender journey that I've been on in the last five years or so, I've never seen so much growth in me as a person as I have in the 48 years of life that I've enjoyed, you know, in all my life. So, and being with you, has taught me so many life lessons. You know, like I learned stuff yesterday. I learned stuff today. I learned stuff last week, mm -hmm. you know, and it's all like very good, you know, because we we need to grow, you know, we need to be challenged. And like I was saying, you can do the same repetitive little slinky weight exercise or you could choose to get out of the kitty section mm -hmm. and to go pick up the big boy, big girl weight. Yeah, big boy, and, big girl weight. Yeah. And do some real serious, painful workout, you know. And, and that's the only way the muscle's going to grow. A lot know? of people. And, I mean, that's, you know, what happens. And I'm a small bone individual, you know, not having any steroids or any testosterone or anything like that makes it harder. I've got to eat more and I'm taking Sumaru to try to, you know, heal my workouts. But I think a lot of it comes from heart and how you visualize the mind is very powerful. And I know that right now I'm 128 pounds. I know two years from now, I'll achieve my 150 that I want to be of pure muscle and lean. I like to be like 5% body fat with 150 pounds. And you'll yeah. see I'll him. achieve it. We'll do this exercise. Well, he'll like take me up and flip me around. <laughs> Yeah. That'll be something. Yeah. But um, but it all comes from heart. And if you have the heart to do what you want to do, and I'm 53 years old, which a lot of people my age have a gut, you know, I'm, I don't have, you know, I mean, for a 53-year-old, I'm, I'm pretty happy where I'm at, but I'm always challenging myself, you know, and I like to be 150 pounds of healthy muscle, 5% body fat. And that's just the health goal that I would like to have, you know. And I've never had abs at all so i mean it's and you have it's nice to be able to have abs and yeah. to be able to, to like that. do things that that i couldn't do before i don't know what you're saying yeah well, you have to like there they are there they are there's your abs, abs and, uh, so, you know, 
it's or nice a to be able to three year old, you know, it's like and natural, you know. Not to be afraid. Trans women, don't be afraid of building muscle. Mm -hmm. It's so important yeah. for your health, for your future. Yeah. You know, you don't want to get osteoporosis. You don't want to get early onset sarcopenia, you know, where your body, you know, you start losing muscle at the age of like 30, 35, and it starts going away. Mm -hmm. So you want every opportunity you can in order to build muscle because you're going to need it as you turn 50, 60, 70, you can still be building muscle into your 90s, they say. Yeah. You know, there's Definitely. people in China doing Tai Chi at 90s, and they're, mm -hmm. you know, 100 years Jumping old. Jumping on trees and yeah. doing yeah. yoga moves. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, I was going to say, a lot of people like us, we do these things because um, it's part of our journey in life. And for those of you who don't understand you know, transgender people and trans women, trans men and gender nonconforming, you, you need to understand that there's certain things that people do that is a part of their growth as individuals. They've been given an opportunity to grow as an individual. And for some, not for all, but for some people, that would include transitioning gender. And not that they literally transition gender, mm -hmm. but they literally, in their mind, transition from the gender that they were born as to the gender that they feel most comfortable living as. Yeah. And that is something that is a part of a person's own personal expression as a human mm -hmm. and their own journey in life. And there's so many things that we don't understand about past life, um, about our gender journeys and mm -hmm. things like that, and why we're on the journeys that we're on. But what we do ask for is that many of you who don't understand it and don't really see the point in it, or you think like that man did yesterday, that we only do these things for our own attention mm -hmm. and that for to get the attention from others and to be like out and loud and mm -hmm. proud and stuff. No, that's not why. There are, there are many, many reasons why these things happen. Yeah. Trauma is one. You know, um, life lessons are another. Um, you know, just being able to grow as an individual, you know. And this is an opportunity for us as human beings to grow. And that's why we do what we do a lot of times. Yeah. So. All right. An hour and 70 minutes. That's a long one. It is a long one. But. All right. Thank you guys for watching, and for those of you who watch in the future, yeah. thanks for hanging on and yeah. listening to us ramble and talk. We'll be back on Tuesday uh, to do our regular show and on YouTube. Uh, on YouTube and stuff, but we just felt like sharing a little bit of our lives here on Sunday Chat. Yeah. We might do this on a regular basis in the chat on Facebook and have people join in. That's cool. Okay. All right, guys. Thank you. We love you. But remember, remember to always love yourselves, too. Mm -hmm.